This video is part two of the video series on producing these facet wood desk clocks. In part one of this video series, we demonstrated how we cut the various facets on these wood blocks for the faceted wood desk clocks. In this part two of the video series, we'll demonstrate how we finish these wood blocks. First of all, sanding these facets on a disc sander, followed by hand sanding using some custom made sanding disc, and then sanding with a sanding mop with some 320 grit sandpaper. Finally, we'll take these wood blocks, we'll seal them with some bush oil, and we'll follow it up with several coats of polyurethane, and then buffing to get a nice gloss finish on all the faceted wood blocks. Next, we'll insert the clock mechanisms into the cavities in the wood blocks to finish the desk clocks. In part three of this video series, we'll show you all of the 15 completed faceted wood desk clocks. We'll have a picture of each of the desk clocks, and then we'll put each of these desk clocks on a rotating platform so you can see all the different sizes and angles of the finished desk clock. Finally, we'll give a description of each of the desk clocks, what woods were used to produce the desk clock, and what angles were used for the various facets. After the faceted wood desk clock blanks come off the band saw, the facets need to be sanded to remove the saw marks left on the surface of the facets by the band saw blade. This can most easily be done by sanding the facets on a Grizzly Model G 0702 disc sander with the AccuFacet L bracket support plate and the AccuFacet miter bar and plate developed by AccuSlice. Details on this system and the setup are described in a previous YouTube video. The facets will be sanded using the same setup of the L bracket support plate and pattern disc that were used to cut the facets on the bandsaw. The miter bar and plate are slid into the miter bar slot on the disc sander and the L bracket support plate is attached to this plate by selecting two of the mounting holes on the plate using the same two brass thumb screws that were used on the bandsaw. Mount the facet wood block on the L bracket support plate and use the same index position to sand the facets that were used to cut the facets on the bandsaw. I'm sanding the zero degree or flat top surface first. The disc sander rotates quite rapidly and it's easy to create burn marks on the surface of the facets. To minimize these burn marks, sand the facets very lightly and with short cycle times. Check the sanded surfaces frequently to make sure that all the saw marks have been removed and also check for burn marks. You can completely remove the L bracket support plate and miter bar from the disc sander to more clearly evaluate the sanding action. Next rotate the L bracket support plate to the next facet, in this case 20 degrees, and lock it in place with the brass thumb screws. Check the index position to make sure that you are standing flat on the desired facet. Rotate the faceted block by two index steps and sand the next facet. Complete this process until all the facets at the 20 degree angle have been sanded. Again, inspect your work frequently. If the facets are not even in size or bandsaw marks still exist, it may be necessary to resand some of the facets. Rotate the L bracket support plate to the 40 degree setting. Be sure to turn the index pin by one step to get the correct angle for the facet. Continue to sand all the facets at this 40 degree angle. Repeat the process for the remaining facets. Be sure to rotate the index pin by one stop between each facet layer. When I get to the 80 and 100 degree angle facets, I'm moving the L bracket support plate to a new position two or three steps to the left on the miter bar plate. This is done to get a better sanding position on the sanding disc. Okay, that's sanded. But the uh, 120 I'll have to sand by hand, it wouldn't, it wouldn't fit on here. But all, it all needs hand sand anyway. The uh, disc sander works good for getting all the saw marks out, but it leaves quite a few burn marks. When these faceted discs come off the disc sander, uh, there's still some uh, marks on the facets from the uh, sanding disc, depending on what grit you uh, cut with. And also you often get burn marks because a disc sander just goes too fast. Especially on hardwoods like uh, cherry, it burns up pretty easily. So these uh, flat surfaces need to be cleaned up. And you can't just take a piece of sandpaper and, and sand it like this because you're going to round the corners. You're not going to get a nice flat surface. So what I've done is I've created these sanding discs, and it's nothing more than a, a piece of like quarter inch thick 
wood scrap left over from you know some projects about an inch and a half wide uh, about six inches long and I glue sandpaper to both sides and I can use these to sand the facets you know keep the surface nice and flat against that facet and you know sand it and get it nice and smooth get rid of all the you know sanding marks and do different grits I usually do a starting with maybe a 150 going down to 220 maybe you can go down to 320 grit for the final finish and that gets it nice and flat and gets rid of all the, the marks. So let me show you briefly how I make these. They're pretty simple. It's nothing more than some sandpaper uh, and glue these uh, plates to them. And I do put sandpaper on both sides because what's happened if you just were to uh, put sandpaper on one side and glue it, these boards might warp on you and you want to keep a nice flat surface. By gluing both sides with sandpaper, you can minimize or eliminate that warping or cupping of the boards. And you notice I marked the grid. I just took a felt marker to mark the grid so I know what grid I'll be sanding with. Another piece of wax paper on top and then just a piece of MDF and I'll put some weights on it just to clamp it. I could also put this on my press uh, to press it but this, this is enough weight just to get a good glue joint. Let that set for an hour or two. After the gluing is complete, this is a, a complete set of two and I'll just take a knife, a scalpel or a knife And there's my sanding disc. And yet, like I said, it's just it's great for keeping these surfaces flat as you're sanding. Okay, let me start by sanding this uh, portion I couldn't get sanded on this sander. And let me try some 150, see if that's good enough. I continue to sand each of the facets. First with the 150 grit sandpaper sanding sticks and then I finish with the 220 grit sandpaper sanding sticks. The hand sanding of the facets is very time consuming, especially when I need to sand out the burn marks that were created by the disc sander. I won't bore you with the entire hand sanding process, which ended up taking about an hour to sand each of the faceted desk clock blocks. I usually uh, sand this base on my disc sander. This is a coarser disc than my finer disc that I use for sanding the facets. On this first disc sander, I'm sanding it with a 100 grit sandpaper. And then I move over to the second sanding disc and I sand it with a 180 grit sandpaper. And then I finish with hand sanding using some 220 grit sandpaper. This is my sanding mop. I have a 320 grit sandpaper on here and I use this to sand uh, all the facets. And I make sure I sand these facets flat, uh, straight on. Try not to round the corners off too much. So. And I check it over closely and make sure that there's no, uh, here's need some additional hand sanding. In part one of this video series, I demonstrated the drilling of the hole in the faceted block for the clock insert. This drilling process needs to be completed after sanding the faceted block on the disc sander because a pattern disc is required for the disc sanding but must be removed to drill the clock insert hole. I have my 15 faceted disc clock blocks ready to be finished. Uh, these six are done and these nine need to be finished yet. And I usually start with uh, bush oil. I like to get these maybe two or three coats of bush oil, allowing 24 hours of drying time between coats. And then after that, give it uh, several coats of polyurethane. I did dust these off with an air gun and then I wipe them down with a tack cloth. Uh, they've all been sanded, they're ready to finish. I like using this bush oil because it, uh, first of all, darkens the wood a little bit. I like darker woods. 
Uh, it also seals the pores of the wood, so the polyurethane will work better. And that first block is uh, mahogany. Well, next time we get some standoffs to get these off the table and we'll let these dry overnight. I'm ready to finish these faceted desk clock blocks and I've given these nine uh, here uh, two coats of bush oil and allow them to dry for three days over a long weekend. After that, I lightly sanded it with some uh, 600 grit sandpaper and used a tack cloth to remove any uh, excess sawdust that might be on it. And now I'm ready to add the polyurethane wipe on finish. And this is a clear gloss wipe on polyurethane. And I usually apply this with a lint free cloth, uh, wipe it on, and allow between two and four hours drying time between each coat. And these nine I'm planning to give it between seven and ten coats of the wipe on poly and probably sanding in between a few of those coats. These other six over here uh, have been already given five coats of the polyurethane. I gave them a light sanding this morning and then of course dusted them off and I'll be giving those a few more coats to finish them. I do like using the wipe on poly finishes because first of all the coats are very thin. As a result there's no sagging or running of the finishes and the finishes dry quite quickly. But I do allow two to four hours between coats. After the finish has been applied, I place a faceted block on a block of nails to keep the finished surfaces from touching the table surfaces. Okay, I'll let that dry for about uh, probably four hours before I get another coat. And it'll take probably you know, three or four days to get these finished. I give in each of these faceted desk clock blocks uh, 10 coats of the polyurethane uh, thin coat wipe on finish, allowing four hours between each coat. And now I'm ready to take these to the buffing system and polish them out and finish them. Okay, I'm ready to start buffing up these faceted desk clock blocks. And the main purpose of the uh, buffing is just to get rid of any very small, fine dust uh, particles that might be in the surface. You know, I feel a little little thing here and there, not much, but do feel a little bit. So I'm trying a new product I picked up at a recent trade show. This is called uh, Yorkshire Grit. It's a microfine abrasive paste uh, in a, a beeswax with microfine uh, abrasive powders. And it's a fine paste. And I usually just take a little bit of this and smear it on the surface. And then I'll buff it on this wheel. Then I have a second wheel over in, on the right here, which is a plain disc with nothing no abrasive at all on it. I'll use that as a, a finishing. But this stuff seems to work pretty good. Uh, the finished product comes out as super smooth. Once again, as we're done with the mop sander, I buff the flats on the facets so as not to round any of the facets. And that is really nice and smooth. The second buffing wheel is free of any abrasive material and is used to finish cleaning up the fastest surfaces and buff to a high gloss finish. And there's our finished faceted clock desk block. And that came out really nice. There's not a speck of dust on the surface. It's perfectly smooth. This completes the production of these 15 wood desk clock blocks. All these blocks are different, no two are alike. I have a few comments I'd like to share with you on some things I observed in producing these wood blocks. I used the 10, 12, 14, and 16 AccuFacet pattern disc to produce these design. Here's a comparison of the 12, 14, and 16 pattern disc. Actually, there are 6, 7, and 8 facets per layer. Since I skipped a step on the pattern disc when cutting the facets in order to, to alternate, the facet patterns between the layers. The more facets in a layer, the greater the angle between the facets and the less pronounced the distinction between the facets. Therefore, the six facets per layer is much easier to see than the eight facets per layer. 
On the top or first facet layer, I've used a 0, a 10, and a 20 degree angle for the first cut. In comparing the 10 and 20 degree angle cuts, the 20 degree angle cut is much easier to see than the 10 degree cut. In fact, I recommend that at least a 20 degree angle cut between facets and even between facet layers when cutting the facets. They're just easier to see. I do like the zero degree angle cut as long as the next layer of facets is at least 20 degrees. On many of these faceted wood desk clock blocks, I cut the same number of facets on all layers of the clock as in these examples. This gives a more pronounced design of the finished block as in this six-sided shape on the face of the clock. However, in other examples, I cut facets on all the pattern discs except the bottom one or two layers, as in this example. So in this block I made with the 12 facet acu a facet pattern disc, I cut six facets per layer in all the top layers, and then cut 12 facet positions on the bottom layer. This produces a more rounded surface that will be outlining the clock face. On many of the blocks I inserted a thin laminate disc, or several laminate disc, in the center of the block. I originally did this because I needed to glue two pieces of wood together to obtain the thickness of wood block that was needed for the project. If I had just glued the two pieces of wood together, you'd probably see a faint line between the layers in the finished project. A laminate insert hides the glue joint and also provides some detail to the project. These multiple layer discs provide some very unique design patterns. To sand out the saw marks made from the band saw, I used a disc sander. However, the disc sander created a lot of burn marks on some of the facets, especially on hardwoods like cherry. This was due to the high speed of the disc. I used 180 grit sandpaper on the disc sander. I'll probably go to 120 or even 100 grit sandpaper in the future. Hand sanding of the facets without using the disc sander is an option, but would probably be more time consuming, but it can be done. Okay, we're now ready to finish the desk clock blocks by inserting the clock mechanisms. I have three models of desk clock mechanisms that I bought for this project. These are all made by a company called Clock Kit. You can buy them online. These larger versions, the three and a half inch, which is designed for some of my larger blocks. And to insert these, you just uh, select what angle where you want this thing to set. And these all have a friction fit that just slides in, in place. And that's the entire assembly of the uh, clock. For the smaller ones, same thing. These have a rubber ring on the base. Again, the holds in position. If you ever need a change, you can just pull it out. There's a battery compartment. You can swap, up, uh, swap out the battery. And then we have our other pattern. Again, decide where you want this to sit. You can have it this way or this way. That way is probably better. And just push in your desk clock. And that completes three of these desk clocks. We'll finish the rest of these, and in part three of this video, we'll have a picture of each of these desk clocks. We'll put each of these on a rotating base and rotate it so you can see all the different angles of the facets as it's rotated. Now we'll have a description of each of these, what wood we use for the clock, what wood we use for the inserts, what uh, pattern disc was used to produce it, and what angles we use to make the various facet cuts. So once again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments or concerns or questions, please give us a call or drop us an email. We'd be glad to hear from you.